Hey guys, this is my video for plant pathology on the fungal disease coffee leaf rust, which is caused by the pathogen Hemolia fastatrix. As the name implies, this disease affects coffee plants, which give us the glorious drink that most of us drink on a daily basis. The disease affects up to 25 species of the genus Coffea, including Coffea arabica and Coffea sanifora, which make up 75% and 20% of the world's coffee production, respectively. The coffee plant is a tall flowering perennial evergreen that produces seed pods that give us the coffee beans we use to make our drinks. Coffee leaf rust is unfortunately found wherever coffee is grown in the world. It was first discovered in Sri Lanka in the mid-1800s but quickly spread to Africa and Southeast Asia. It was not until 1970 that the disease first appeared in the Western Hemisphere in Brazil but quickly spread to the rest of South America and the Caribbean. Germination of the uridiniospores, which are the spores that disperse from the infected plant to provide inoculum for other coffee plants, are dispersed by wind or rain and likely human activity. Continual moisture is the most important environmental condition for infection, as infection can take place over a wide range of temperatures, between 18 to 28 degrees Celsius. Although there are disease symptoms on other parts of the plant, the major symptom to watch for are yellow or orange spots on the surface of coffee leaves, which eventually grow and cause necrosis of the leaf. Ultimately, the rust causes coffee plants to lose their leaves, which weaken the plant and decrease the following year's seed production. Here we can see a collection of developing orange spots on the surface of a coffee leaf. Up close, you might be able to see the orange spores that give the leaf a rusty look. In severe cases, discoloration and disfiguration of the pods can occur. Coffee is the world's most heavily traded food, making this an economically important disease. Coffee leaf rust has been blamed for an annual 30 to 50 percent decrease in bean production, but during a major epidemic in 2012, some areas saw losses as high as 70 percent. Interestingly, almost all farmed coffee plants actually descend from a single tree dating back to 1713, leading to the genetic uniformity we have in coffee plants today. This is the reason that Hemolia vestatrix has been so successful at infecting coffee plants. Resistant genes from wild Ethiopian coffee varieties have had limited success because they end up decreasing coffee quality. Initial management techniques relied on quarantining diseased plants, which worked for over a century until the disease appeared in Brazil and spread too quickly to be contained. Fungicides have proved to be very successful against the spread of coffee leaf rust, but are too expensive for most farmers. They can also be toxic to the environment, and multiple, well-timed applications are required. Keeping plants healthy with fertilizers and pruning plants to increase airflow can help to prevent the spread of disease, and there is current debate over whether planting coffee in full sun or partial shade actually has a significant effect on susceptibility. Recently, research has focused on finding biocontrol measures that could manage coffee leaf rust, and the most promising is the mycoparasitic fungus Lysanocilium lysani. A study published in the journal Biological Control found that this fungus could control the disease without causing major damage to the coffee plant, although there was a year-long lag between when infection by Hemolia vestatrix occurred and suppression by Lysanocilium lysani. For anyone interested in learning more, a great article published earlier this year titled Current Status and Management of Coffee Leaf Rust gives a more detailed look at the impacts this disease has in South America. Thanks for watching!